Hey, hey, hey! It's my iPhone 10 review. Hey guys, Tech Made Simple here, and this is my review of the iPhone 10, iPhone X. So, this is a beautiful, beautiful phone. 5.8 inch display a little bit under uh, 2k um, Apple's first in the OLED display great viewing angles as you can see I'm turning it around playing with it real quick has a very nice uh, glass back which is uh, Apple was originally with that with the iPhone um, uh, if I'm right, the uh, 3, 3GS and the uh, 4, um, they had glass backs. And I thought they should have stayed with that. People act like it's a surprise now that they have a glass back, but they've had one before. They also have wireless charging, um, which is another plus for Apple fans. I know it's been out for Android fans, but um, sometimes when you're late to the party, it doesn't mean that it's horrible. You're just in time. I love saying that. You're not late. You're just in time. Um, one thing I like about it is the responsiveness of iOS 11.1.1. They fixed that text bug that everybody's worried about. Um, and I have to give them a really standing applause for the way this phone looks. It is beautiful. It was time for the iPhone to be updated and have a, uh, you know, a screen that Android, you know, Android's been doing the, uh, not, I wouldn't say full displays as far as Samsung and LG is concerned, but they have been doing the stretch displays, which iPhone is now a part of the party. There's so many different Android phones, it's hard to keep up, but I know the Xiaomi Mi Mix 1 and 2 was one of the phones that had a, a, a full display at the top. I mean, it had a small bezel at the bottom, but I think the essential phone and I think iPhone kind of nailed it more than any other phone because besides the notch, it's a full screen, period. And I don't really see any other uh, manufacturer doing that. I've seen phones that have displays, but then they have a chin, you know, or they have, um, you know, something going on to prevent it from being just a full display. But the iPhone and the essential phone are the closest thing to it. Now, I know they both have this notch iPhones being longer than the uh, essential phone. But for them to first take a whack at it for their first try, I think they did a really good job. Um, the camera, I like the camera a lot. Um, they gave the iPhones this year uh, a bigger aperture than the ones before allowing more lighting to the subject. But they did have to do something different with the camera lenses because the pictures, if you compare them, people are always saying, well, they're not really that much of a difference. I find a lot different in as far as the saturation, as far as the exposure, as far as the clarity, as far as the uh, darker areas. I find a lot different with this 12 uh, megapixel sensor. And to add in this version, besides the 8 and the 8 Plus, they added optical image stabilization in both lenses. Um, I think they did a really, really good job with this one. Um, could it have been bigger? Yes. But the first iteration of it, I think they nailed it. You know, I mean, the Note 8 had came out with the phone right uh, shortly after the S8 Plus, And they realized that they needed to join the dual camera, you know, era. So they did. And they added optical image stabilization in both of them, which is really good. They didn't change the front-facing camera, but they changed the stabilization in the back. They added, you know, uh, another camera, and they made a telephoto. And, you know, everybody was excited about it. That's a minor change. But when the iPhone did it, and they added optical image stabilization in it. Now, remember, there are seven, seven plus you know, had dual cameras, but, you know, it, su it suffered with an aperture and the optical image stabilization, but it still was a good camera. They tweaked that. They added both of them. They changed the display for this phone. They changed the body for this phone, gave it wireless charging and gave it fast charging. And people are still saying, well, that's not justifiable enough of an upgrade. Now, I know the expense of the phone, it is a lot. 
you know, 11, 1149, 1215 with tax is a lot to spend on the phone. But if you're invested in the Apple ecosystem, you're fine. I mean, this is something that you enjoy. This is something that you put your time into, your personal business into. Your phone is like a mini computer. You know, you have calendar dates, you have projects with your phone. Uh, if you have your phone established with your work, then you have your client email put on your phone. Your phone is a lot and it should be something that you enjoy to use on a daily basis. Now to die core hard Apple fans, um, I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you. You know, sometimes you have to pay to play. Uh, to some people that are doing it on a payment plan, hey, whatever floats your boat, whatever gets you the phone that you like, uh, hey, go for it. We only live once. We all have hobbies. I'm a collector. You know, I'm a tech. I love collecting stuff. That's my hobby. I love trying out new phones and OSs. I'm not tied to just one OS. I like Symbian when it used to be on the Nokia phones. I like Windows phones when they used to be relevant. I like Android phones, no matter how much of an array they're spread it across different manufacturers. I like iPhones. And what I always tell myself is that there is a lot, a lot of Android phones. There's only one iPhone. You have to really think about that. So without that little uh, time being spent up too much, I'm going to show you some things that I do like about the iPhone. Okay. So if I click here and we're going to go to... assistive touch and what we're going to do here is you see where you can do an assistive touch you have customized top level menu single tap double tap long press 3d touch and you have the ideal opacity and you have the create new gestures what you want to do if you want to create a home button you hit the assistive touch did you see that just pop up at the bottom right here so now that's your home button you can have a double tap for multitasking long press for screenshot home for 3d touch so now if I touch it goes to the home screen and you can move the button anywhere you want to uh, you know mimic that you can double tap it you bring up your recent apps you hold on your recent apps now when you hold on them a lot of people I see in videos are holding it and touching this button you don't have to do that you can hold it swipe up and it's gone so remember, now you have a virtual home button for people that were so missing the um, home button because of the off screen display. You have the option now of a virtual home button. And I just want to say um, innovation is very important for growth. A lot of people always knock something that changes or that they're used to. Never become complacent with something. Always hunger for change. Change is good. It teaches you. You're constantly growing and you're never conforming to something. It's like working out. Once your body conforms to something, you plateau and you never have growth and you see the same results, if any results, after your body plateaus for some form of time. So you always want to be, you know, learning more and more as you grow. So that's my uh, take on the iPhone. As I stated before, I like it. I did some videos with um, stabilization and I took some pictures with it. Um, I'll be showing you that and um, yeah, I just, I really like it. I really like this new phone. I mean, I have no gripes about it. Um, could it have been bigger? Yeah. Um, could they have done something with the notch? Probably so. But after a while it grows on you. Like I said, the new emojis. I don't think anybody's buying a $1,100 phone for an emoji. I think what they're buying it for is the new look of the iPhone, which a lot of iPhone users have been wanting for a while. Android has constantly been changing the way they look. Um, I think they're uh, buying it for the camera, for the new A11 Bionic chip. I think they're buying it for the optical image stabilization in both cameras. I think they're buying it for the new portrait mode up front to take selfies, capture family memories. I think they're buying it from the move from LCD to OLED. I think they're buying it because this screen is one of the highest resolution screens on an iPhone. It may not be 2K, but it's higher than 1080p. I think they're also buying it for the new gestures, the new learning curve. I think people are buying it for more than just an, an emoji that people keep saying. Um, and it just goes to show you that you don't need six 
or 8 gigs of RAM to run a software efficiently. It doesn't take all these different hardwares to, oh, well, you know, the, the Snapdragon 835 is this, and they're going to implement this, and they're going to implement that. Apple also has 1080p at 240 frames per second. They also have 4K video at 60 frames per second. But people don't realize that. They always are so quick to talk about it. Yeah, the screen and as far as the icons and the iOS as a whole hasn't changed. You still have your four, you know, icons in a row. You know, you still have your, uh, you know, traditional grid of icons. But you also have a system that works, that's stable, that's reliable. And you also have one iPhone going against all these different other manufacturers that adopt Android, which is an open source platform. Now, am I being biased and like, oh, Apple? As I mentioned before, I do like multiple platforms of tech, but I'm not going to just bash everything because everybody's jumping on that bandwagon. I see things differently as a tech. You know, I, I like the way that the 811 chip, A11 chip plays games. I like the way that Apple has always had its OS optimized for the most proficient proficiency in gameplay. I like that. I like that with my iPhone, I know I can pull it out and snap a picture that it would take some Android phones to go into manual mode to capture. So, I mean, there's its ups and its downs, but it's by far not a bad phone at all. And would I recommend it? Definitely, I would. I would recommend it right away. Um, and if you don't have the money to buy it right out, do what everybody else does. Put it on a payment plan. But, I mean, it's a great phone. And it's a nice addition and change that has been long awaited for Apple fans in the ecosystem. And I'm hearing good things that they're going to take some of this technology over to the iPads. And there's going to be a iPhone X Plus. I mean, you have a fan base of people that go outside and sleep in tents and that are so dedicated to Apple, just as well as you have a fan base for Android. Neither is better. None is worse. I think everybody has their own opinion, period. Now, my daily driver is an iPhone. My work phone is a Note 8. Actually, I'm doing the video on the Note 8 right now for this review. So, I mean, it's just, I like it. I like it a lot. Do a little photo right here. Just take a photo real quick. Just testing it out right now. Take it right here. Now I'll show you. That's a real good point and shoot. I'm just pointing and shooting. That's all I'm doing. So, yeah. I give the iPhone 10 X a thumbs up. Um, very good for their first try at an all screen display, somewhat. And it's beautiful. So I'll leave my link in the description of the old video about the uh, privacy issues with Facebook. Hopefully that covered some of the things that people were concerned about and um, they were really, really worried about. Um, and I'll check you out next time. I'll leave the uh, videos, the stabilization tests, and some of the pictures I took in the video. Tech made simple. Take care, guys. You guys stick around for music and fun, you hear? Hey, hey, hey. Na, na, na iPhone 10. I'm here right now doing a stabilization test with the iPhone 10. Just seeing how it manages while I'm walking. Remember, I'm holding this in my hand, so I'm trying to see how stable this is. Uh, looks really steady and smooth in the viewfinder, but when I upload the video, you guys will be able to tell better. Um, so let's pan around. Let's run for a minute. See how the stabilization holds up. And looks like it held pretty good. This is a stabilization test on the iPhone 10. 
uh, checking out how steady it is while I'm just holding it in my hand while I'm driving um, on this rainy day. Not too bad. Um, looks pretty good in the viewfinder of the uh, cell phone. Uh, but you guys will ultimately be able to tell how it looks when I um, upload the video. And it seems so far that it's being very steady just by me holding it in the hand, going over a couple little bumps here. So yes, this is the stabilization test of the iPhone 10. All right, here's part two of the stabilization test for the iPhone 10, and this road is really bumpy. And I want you guys to tell me how it looks to you how smooth it is or how rocky it is to test out the stabilization of the iPhone 10. Um, seems like this road is a little bit more rockier. Um, and I'm just trying to see how this holds up. Now remember, I'm holding it in my hand. I don't have it positioned or mounted on anything. So we're trying to get a real feel of what would happen um, driving. If I'm trying to record something with the iPhone 10. Na na na, gonna have a good time